Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Wow, I am so excited. I am so excited to be here, um, to be living in this time. You know why? Because every single day, I think it's a day of gratitude. So for those of you who do not know me, my name is Lisa Bubari by trade. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant, your expert hypnotherapist, as a matter of fact. And I have a healing center in Glendale, California called Heal Within. And that's exactly what I do. I help people heal within and appreciate and accept themselves for who they are. The modality I use, which I call it, it's my signature style, it's called the three E, which is evoking what was, embracing what is, and evolving to what will be. Why? Because you do matter. Hmm. So today we're going to be talking about, well, just a few days ago, I had my book signing at Barnes & Noble in Burbank, and I want to be so grateful for all of you. I am grateful to all of you who showed up in support for those of you who purchased the book. And I just wanted to say it was a great experience. And for the person who put it all together, Troy, thank you so much. And even the manager, the coordinator, uh, Damien. So this is a shout out to all of them. The book is called Stand Up to Slim Down. And I've been talking about this a lot because it is, although it's a workbook for managing weight, emotional eating, how to de-stress, it's also about standing up for who you are, your beliefs, having a voice and everything, right? So I got an email. I got an email saying, thank you so much for your messages. I've been following you and everything. But when you talk about emotional eating, is that, um, is that bad? I'm like, by all means, no, we, so many of us do emotional eating when we are stressed when we are depressed when we get into that zone of being by ourselves so emotional eating i like to call it um it's not a bad thing actually no habit of ours no habit that you have is bad for you does that make sense because each and every habit is um, is helping you feel good about yourself for something. So today I want to talk about um, self labelings that we have done and that has become a habit. And the labels can be I'm afraid, I I am anxious, I am paranoid. I am depressed. So those are labels that somewhere, somehow we have placed upon ourselves. And believe it or not, we come to believe the labels. And if we repeat it over and over and over and over. So what I like to do with my clients is when I say evoke, is when they come in with the belief system, the BSs, that they come in and saying, I am depressed. Tell me, what does depressed mean to you? That means you do not get out or you feel depressed, you're in a funk. Uh, if you could find a word to describe what is depressed, because I know I go in and out of funk. When I was a teenager, I was in a funk a lot. So was I depressed? Some may call it depressed, but the depression of a child and a depression of an adult may be different for different reasons. And I'm not saying it's not valid, but we are depressed for different things. The one who loses someone dear in their life and they feel depressed is different than when 
you want a job, you go for an interview after an interview and you don't get the job and you are depressed, someone may be depressed because they didn't get the job. That means they needed the income and they don't have the income or the job they were so looking forward, they didn't get that job and they feel depressed. But depression and feeling depressed is different. And it's such a fine line. And I want people to become more aware of how they speak, how they labelize themselves and come to believe the label they placed upon themselves. And knowing that those labels, sometimes it's been placed by others and they call us that. Oh, you're in the you're in depression, you're depressed, or why are you so fearful? You're constantly afraid of everything. And then they start questioning themselves. Am I afraid? Maybe being cautious, someone else labels it afraid, and you come to think, you start doubting yourself. What am I afraid of? And then you start searching about the things that you're afraid of instead of well, I may be more cautious about certain things. Does this make sense to you? Because words are so powerful. Even the labels are so powerful. What if you can put 5%, just 5% more playfulness, more kindness, more nurturing words upon yourself. Hi, Seda John. Hi, Angela. Hi, Amy. Hi, Chris. Mm. Here are, uh, thank you for being here. Thank you. If you're watching this, say just uh, send me an emoji. If you are watching this on a replay, just do hashtag replay so I know if there is anything I can respond. By all means, I'm here to respond. So I have a client who came in and um, by all means came in fully active in, in life and yet so many self-doubts, so many negative wordings that had, de it's like depleting himself from moving forward in life, constantly in fear of what if I do something wrong? What if I do something and someone else feels bad? What if I do say something and another person is hurt? This constant doubt inside. If we live like that, there is no way we can move forward. Those doubts, once we started working on it, that even he, he was even afraid to relax that, wow, if I relax, it, it, I may relax too much and that will feel good. Now, when someone has such high, intense job that he has in high security financial job is constantly being on that edge for expectations expectations from high-powered people and throughout his life has had so much expectations from wife, from uh, parents, even grandparents that hide, were high, extreme high financial beings, um, successful people. He's walking on eggshells. Walking on eggshells of doubting himself. Am I good enough? Walking on eggshells. Am I providing my family the best? Walking on eggshells thinking, am I doing the right thing? What if something goes wrong? What if, what if, what if? And it was those what ifs that was creating a lot of anxiety and doubt and within himself. So by evoking all that, 
is coming to embrace who he is and realizing that yes he's got all this past the family and expectations of what they were and he has achieved so much he does not have to be just like them that he loves his sport he loves to go and golf and he's been frozen and he can't even play golf thinking but the time that I am golfing maybe I still have to make a little bit more decisions and make money what if I can come up with another portfolio and I must say he is highly successful so those internal self-doubts internal uh, eating at himself he started eating and eating more chewing on his nails eating so much that he has gained so much weight and those are what we are talking about the emotional eatings because it's not about the real food it's about the labels that we place upon ourselves and we suffocate because of other people's expectations and that can be weighing upon us so when I talk about it even in my book I talk about it's not the true weight it's not being heavy or anything it's the weight the burdens and the blames and the guilt factors those are the emotional things so it's like amazing as I speak it it's like my clients are feeling it let me see hello I see me I learned a lot from you thank you so much right I was afraid of bugs now I just respect them okay hi Kunar Mokur how are you uh, thank you for joining me every one of you thank you for being here uh, today I'm talking about the emotional uh, eatings the emotional weight and we talk about this all the time but it's also realizing how we punish ourselves and that is in a way what I do is help my clients either consciously and then when I take them into this state of relaxation pure utter self realization I think that's where the word self-realization came from that as we quiet down quiet down and shut out so much and become one with our internal dialogue what we feel what we think what we want what we desire it's getting to know who you are self-acknowledgement that that happens in hypnosis it happens in trance state because we go into this place of discovery when we go into hypnosis last week on the 20th we did this beautiful I had a workshop on self-hypnosis and we had about five people there which it was a core group that came together and some who did not know so much about one another and at the end how we held hands because we came to unravel I like to call it peel away as we learn how to do self-hypnosis self-actualization and realization discovering certain things about why are we feeling this way why are we acting this way or why am I speaking this way about myself or others and then doing the self-hypnosis learning the tools of just relaxing on their own and then I even brought the sound healing bowls and it was just amazing pure other hmm that was so profound as a matter of fact in two weeks I'm doing a self-esteem self-confidence workshop um, 
in our office and we're gonna have room only for nine I like nine because seven to nine people because it becomes so small we get to speak we create this place of uh, safe space for one another um, and we get to do some work instead of just telling teaching it becomes sharing and then networking so if you are interested in self-confidence self-esteem workshop class to come it's gonna be two hours it's gonna be I'm looking mm -hmm. down March 9th at at the heel within right here in Glendale California at our healing center by all means just after this we're gonna have um, the way for for you to register and it's first come first serve only seven to nine people not more than nine people will be in here um, so if you are self-conscious and all that I want you to recognize self-labeling and just do this internal self-hypnosis becoming aware of this incredible power of your own choices the words that you speak to yourself the first person who hears it is you become aware of the things you do and if you're constantly fearful and doubtful what if you peel away that label the labels of fear the labels of anxiety and if you are anxious about something how does that thing make you anxious write it down I am anxious I have anxiety and then you can write down I get anxious when and then write down when the when do you feel anxious is it a time of a day is it in the mornings is it at afternoons is it when you are driving is it driving at certain places certain times so become so clear about your patterns recognizing your patterns because all patterns there is a whole pattern to everything that we feel everything that we think and even the words that we use where did this word come from when did I start saying this to myself so once you start recognizing and becoming aware then that's the light bulb becoming clear each day you develop within yourself a strength a strength of conviction a strength of knowing yourself better no one in this world knows more about you than you no matter who says what no one can even police you so yesterday for those who are in the LA area in the Los Angeles area there was a memorial for Kobe uh, Kobe Bryant uh, his daughter and the rest of the crew who passed uh, in that crash it was a beautiful memorial most of the talk was about Kobe and his daughter um, there's millions of people who know about this there are millions of people who followed him and there are those who knew of him but did not really matter in their day-to-day -day life not everyone is about basketball I myself knew who he was but because I'm not into basketball and everything I didn't even know that his daughter was playing basketball how close they were I literally did not know much about his life other than a few years ago about that case that was happening when it came to fruition because of the media so you see no one is an angel in life we all have good bad right wrong as they say law is gray right but all this has brought this beautiful silver lining in our life about mortality about each and every breath that we take 
that as we breathe this we don't we're not supposed to take it for granted not taking our life our job being successful being intelligent everything stop taking yourself for granted the successes that you have your family your children and why not create the best and more kindness instead of creating more fear in your children or living with fear thinking that if I hold myself here with all this anxiety and this depression then I am safe as long as I am in this cocoon I am safe if I stay in this small little world of myself that's not living so I help my clients peel away certain labels patterns habits behaviors that is no longer conducive to their well-being so that they can live life fully so that you can live life fully so the other day I went to an event and after the event was finished and everything she walks up to me and says you're the person I am friends with on Facebook and I am so happy to meet you on person and I love that she says may I give you a hug by all means I'm a huggy touchy person I hug her and I say I'm there for you anytime you can message me, you can call me, you can make an appointment. My consultations are complimentary. I, I offer 15 minute consultations. So I am here for you. If you or someone you know that is suffering by self-defeating words, and they feel anxious, they feel fearful of anything, I can help them. And if I can't, I will find the means to help them. So I hope this was beneficial. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Karen. How are you? Uh, hi, Rubina John. Uh, it's so good to be here with you all. And for all of you, who are watching again I thank you and uh, God bless you I just wanted to say you have complete confidence to attain whatever goals that you want I want you to begin to respect yourself appreciate yourself and accept yourself far more deeply than you have ever before you are here yes we come through our mothers but we are here for a reason. And may you be a source of motivation and inspiration for others. And if I have inspired you, either through the work that I do, by being on Facebook every week, week after week, or through my books, my audios, and you know what? My bracelets. Oops, I don't have it here with me please go to my website in the shop area grab one of the bracelets with the affirmation cards and next week we're going to be talking about affirmations and how the bracelets like a mala do the work so many people have come to me and show me i've got my bracelet and i am so grateful because last friday i saw our supervisor for la county Catherine Barger and I gifted her one of my bracelets one of our affirmation bracelets with our heal within um, logo on it and she was so grateful and I said the work that you do matters we so appreciate you and we thank you so God bless you and may the universal light be with you. I look forward to next week 
And if there is any subject you would like me to speak, if there is any help, by all means, you can message me or say, would you speak about this? And I will. And uh, see you at our workshop. And uh, within half an hour, you can register. Thank you. And see you next week. Bye-bye.